Hello, and welcome to episode 3 of What If Casca Kept Her Sanity. If you aren't caught up yet, I would suggest you click the playlist above so you can get caught up and then watch this episode. So without any further ado, let's get started. Casca and Catalin wake up, the sun high overhead. Mmm, we should get going. We're only a few days walk away. Catalin nods and gets up, and they start walking. Catalin's eyes are averted. Hey, Casca? Yes? Why do you talk so badly about yourself? I, I get that you've been hurt, but, but so have most of us. Not everyone can fight as brilliantly as you, though, and you're kind enough to take me back home. I just don't understand why you think you're a lost cause. Casca pauses. There was a man who saved me a long time ago. He raised me, taught me how to fight, taught me how to do more than just survive. I idolized him. I did everything for him. But Casca's eyes widen and panic sets in. But Catalin grabs her hand and looks at her reassuringly. Casca offers a small smile and continues. He betrayed me along with all of our comrades. He sacrificed us in the name of the dream that we'd all fought for together. He sounds like a monster. Who would do something like that? Betray the people that fought for them. You have every right to be angry. I know I should be angry at him. I should hate him. He did unspeakable things to me and doomed my comrades. He betrayed my guts flashes through her mind. Casca puts her hands to her mouth almost vomiting. It's okay, you don't have to force yourself. The worst part is that I don't think I can hate him. I miss him and I hate myself for it. A part of me misses that dream he tore me apart for. What does that make me? I'm trash that wasn't useful enough to keep around. And now I'm not even strong enough to be angry at the awful things he did. I can't side with him. Guts flashes through her mind again. But I can't oppose him either. When I told you my family sold me to keep me safe, I think I just wanted to believe that. I'm the youngest in my family. I've never been much good at anything. I'm too weak to work the fields, too clumsy to work around the house. Every time I tried to help, I'd end up breaking something and getting yelled at. I always tried being useful, but in the end, I was just a burden. I hated feeling that way. And when they tossed me out at the first opportunity they saw, a part of me was relieved. Then why do you want to go back? I don't have anything else. I couldn't be useful, but I couldn't run away either. I'm pathetic. I thought maybe I could learn to be useful by working for that noble, but now you're the reason I made it through last night. You're more useful than you think. But how can I call myself useful if you saved my life and you think that you're useless? If you're useless, then, then I'm less than useless. I guess we both have some learning to do, huh? Catalin nods somberly. Suddenly, Casca stops Catalin with her arm and puts her other hand on the hilt of her sword. We've got company. A group of three robbers emerge from behind some close-by trees. One has a sword, one has a knife, and one has a bow and arrow. The sword-bearing thief approaches them, and Casca whips out her sword, putting it between them. Oh ho ho, this one's got spirit! I was gonna just take that pretty sword of yours, but now I might just want to have some fun. Casca dashes forward and cuts his arm clean off. The robber screams in agony. Casca thinks to herself, I gotta take down the one with the bow quickly, or things could get dangerous. The knife-bearing thief dashes in front of her target and yells, Er, you got a lucky hit on her boss but there's nothing to fear if I see you come. Casca ducks under his knife without missing a beat and slashes open his stomach. He falls to the ground, landing with a sickening plish. 
Casca looks up to see the third thief's bow drawn, pointed straight at her. Casca thinks to herself, ah, I wasted too much time on them. As he loses his arrow, Catalan jumps between him and Casca. Casca watches in horror as she falls to the ground. The thief begins stringing another arrow, but Casca dashes forward, slashing his neck. He crumples, a sad gargle escaping his lips in place of any last words. Casca turns towards Catalan in a panic, but she stands up. The arrow had barely missed her, having caught in her shirt right below her armpit. Casca inspects her for cuts, making sure the arrow had missed. What were you thinking? You could have been killed! Catalan chuckles. What's so funny? Oh, it's just that compared to last night, jumping in front of one measly arrow wasn't scary at all. Well, one arrow is all it would take to kill you. Don't take your own life so lightly. You won't be any use to your family if you're dead. Then why do you get to rush in recklessly? If I hadn't done anything, you would have died. Well, it's my job to get you home. I couldn't very well do that if you were dead. And you couldn't very well do that if you were dead either. Casca bites her tongue, wanting to refute Catalan's words, but not knowing how. If, if I lost my life giving my all to protect you, I wouldn't have any regrets. But if you died protecting me, the one that's supposed to be protecting you, well then, if you die trying to protect me, then I'll kill myself right after. What? I can't let you die recklessly and be all satisfied about it. From this point on, you're not allowed to die. You'll bring me home and we'll protect each other. No dying allowed. Casca pauses, shocked, not sure how to react. And Catalan thinks to herself, and if I die along the way, you'd better keep on living. I know you have more than just protecting me. You mentioned that all your comrades were sacrificed. Did any survive like you? Two of them survived. One's living through hell right now, waging his own war. I'd like to see him again someday. Casca's heart starts racing as the eclipse flashes through her mind, but it fades as she looks at Catalan, who's giving her a sly grin. You'd like to see him, eh? And what would you like to do once you see him? Casca smiles warmly, blushing slightly. Well, I do love him. Catelyn thinks to herself, Aw, I was hoping to tease her a bit, but she just came right out and said it. Casca's smile fades. But I can't face him yet. He's so strong. He always has been. And, well, I used to think I was too. I don't want him to see me like this. Not until I get stronger. Well, it looks like we both have reasons to get stronger. Casca nods, turning to Catelyn and smiling. The two of them walk off into the distance, and we fade to black. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed episode 3 of What If Casca Kept Her Sanity. I'd like to give a huge thank you to my patrons, and a special congratulations to Omar Tlatelpa for passing the Secret Hunter exam. If you'd like access to perks like shoutouts in my videos, access to a private Discord server, or access to my analysis scripts, I'd be honored if you checked my Patreon out. So anyway, I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye!